Hello, family, and welcome back to season two, episode seven of the Good News Network. I'm Luke Speckman. And I'm Brandon Speckman. And we're here to share with you the acts of the Holy Spirit through the miraculous month of March. Now, today we'll begin by updating you on the newest information we have on the disciples of Russia and the Ukraine. We'll follow that with sharing some of the victories witnessed in this past month's Women's Day events hosted by congregations around the globe. After that, comes a very special announcement, a new addition to the Sold Out Press International Library. And finally, as always, good news from around the world. Beginning with the Ukraine, we want to start by thanking all of you for your constant prayers and financial support for all the disciples there. Incredibly, our recent movement-wide day of fasting and donations to Mercy on Wednesday, March 16th, resulted in an astounding $197,000 joyfully sacrificed to help the Ukrainian brothers and sisters. Incredible. Your generosity is resulting in thanksgiving that is twofold as souls continue to be safe physically and spiritually in Eurasia. A few weeks ago, at the start of the Russian invasion, Russian disciples in the Kiev Ukraine church were asked to either return to the Moscow church or go to Chicago as planned for more training. And so Oleg and Aliona Sorotkin, the Eurasian World Sector leaders, along with their daughters Lydia Sorotkina and Sofia DeBeo and their son-in-law Luca DeBeo flew to Chicago mid-March and safely landed there. And with 2022 being titled the Year of the Spirit, it's been so inspiring to see how God's Spirit has also moved in totally unexpected and unprecedented ways in Eurasia. Boldly walking in step with the Spirit is Viktor Maslianikov, who was recently sent from London to Poland to receive the Ukrainian sisters there that were fleeing from Kiev. And soon after, with just 12 quick days of preparation, Viktor and the nine Ukrainian disciples in Warsaw banded together on March 27th to host the inaugural service of the Warsaw International Christian Church, where 42 were in attendance. That historic Sunday, Victor received a wartime commission and was appointed an evangelist in the Kingdom of God by Michael Williamson, the European World Sector Leader. Also rising up in Warsaw are Nadia, Lesia, Angelina, Katya, and Luba, all Ukrainian sisters who have been hired as full-time Mercy Warsaw ambassadors to meet the needs of the thousands of stranded refugees in Poland. It should be noted that our Amsterdam Church has warmly welcomed many Ukrainian disciples as well. And speaking of mercy, our newest branch was established at the end of this past month in Lviv, Ukraine by Nick Bordieri, the Mercy World Sector leader, who flew from his home in Mexico City to Warsaw and then traveled 15 hours from Warsaw in cars, trains, and walking to finally reach Lviv. Working with Michael Williamson, Viktor Maslianikov, and the Kiev disciples who moved to Lviv, Nick established Mercy Lviv to give shelter, support, and counsel to disciples and non-Christians alike who fled to this most Western major city in the Ukraine. Also for your prayers to be planted on April 10th is the Lviv International Christian Church. Amazingly, our fearless Ukrainian brother, Bogdan Makeda, who shared with us in our last GNN episode, A Day in the Life, will be appointed evangelist at the inaugural via Zoom by his father in the faith, Oleg Sorotkin. Congratulations to all of you. We will continue to keep you in our prayers as you lead the way in saving your city during this challenging time. As all of you likely know, March marks the beginning of Women's History Month, a time where worldwide we celebrate the exceptional accomplishments and sacrifices of women throughout history. This month also ushers in so much excitement and preparation for many of our women's ministries to host their own Women's Days which are incredibly fruitful events where both sisters and brothers can put a special focus on inviting women to come and experience the kingdom through testimonies, performances, and of course, powerful preaching from the female heroes in the faith. Let's go over to our dear sister Patricia Fumba in Abidjan to tell us more. Thank you, Luke and Brendan. In the movement around the world, we have hosted several phenomenal Women's Day this year. So far, the ripple effect has been outstanding. Of note is the inner West Super Region in Chicago, where the 35 women led by Debbie Lehman had 105 visitors to their Women's Day title, I Am Her. As well as in Detroit, where the small but mighty women's ministry of 19 had their first, very first Women's Day with 80 in attendance. That's over three for one visitors. And over in Kinshasa, Congo, 
They had an incredible almost 400 women fill the room where they closed out the women's day with three victorious baptisms. Lastly, in Manila, the sister led inspirationally by Colin Chaleno had almost 600 in attendance. The food from this Women's Day had propelled the Manila Church to now have over 100 baptisms in the first 90 days of 2022. At the end of March, we have witnessed 47 Women's Day around the globe, where 2,152 sisters hosted over 5,200 women in attendance. The result so far has been 68 additions to baptisms and restoration. And there are many more Women's Day to come in the upcoming months. We are so excited to see all the food God continues to bring to the hours of preparation, hard work, prayer, the outpouring of love, and of course, His Word being preached in our precious women ministry. Back to you, Luke and Brandon. Thank you so much, Patricia. We are absolutely praying for a continued incredible harvest. And now we have an exciting announcement by Fernando Chavez, the dynamic Dallas church leader, about a new Sold Out Press International book. Of course, Sold Out Press International is known to most as Soapy. Immediately following will be a day in the life of our dear brother, Mickey Ngungu, who leads the Kinshasa Church. It is with tremendous joy that we announce the extraordinary publication of the newest Sold Out Press International book, COPS, Company of Prophets, Church Builders Field Manual by Dr. Jason M. Dimitri. This book was his ICCM doctoral dissertation. COPS is both an in-depth study of the scriptures and a practical guide written to help each ministry leader to implement Jesus' method of building a leadership group to lead their ministry, thus taking it to new heights. Indeed, Jason is an expert builder, as the San Francisco church was only 35 disciples upon his arrival. As of today, less than eight years later, Jason has raised up many evangelists of which I am honored to be just one of them. As well, during these eight years, he has planted many churches and formed a dream geographic sector covering Texas, Colorado, Utah, Oklahoma, and Northern California, which now numbers exactly 783 disciples. As a fellow servant in the Lord, my challenge for you is simple. Buy this book, apply yourself, to the scriptural principles within and win your city for God. For your very own copy, visit Amazon or ask your church leader today. The church in Kinshasa is doing well. Uh, it's a church we started with 11 people. Uh, it was a remnant group. And now we are 535 disciples. And uh, we have also in the country three other churches. The first is in Mujimai with about uh, 120 disciples. The second is in Kikwit, about uh, 68 disciples. The third one is in Bandondoville with about um, 68 disciples. Um, and we also have a church in Brazzaville, in Republic of Congo. I have been leading the Kinshasa Church for 13 years. I was appointed as geographic sector leader for French-speaking countries of Central Africa. For all those countries, the population is 100, about, about 118 million people. I found that I have a cancer in February this year. But it started with a mass here. And so I went to, the, to see the doctor. And after biopsy, they said that I have 
cancer. My treatment plan is chemotherapy once a week for 12 weeks. I decide to come to India because I have a, an experience with our sister Marta. We came here for treatment and uh, it was a success. And I was sure that coming to India, uh, I will get good treatment. But let me tell you that it, it was always my dream to visit India because of the church uh, in India. Every time I was reading good news from India, I was willing to come and visit that church. And I think God said, okay, as you want to go to India to visit the church in India, I have a good plan for you. I'm very happy to be with the disciples in New Delhi. Uh, it is my family and uh, it is a privilege for me uh, to be in the fellowship with them. And last time we went to the service, it was awesome. Brothers and sisters uh, of New Delhi Church are very welcoming. They are awesome. And uh, I don't know, maybe I will be forever in India <laughs> with my family. Why not? I love them. Thank you so much for sharing your journey with us, Mickey. We will continue to pray for your speedy and complete recovery. And now to touch on the latest in our other world sectors, it's time for good news from around the world. On March 4th through March 6th, the Dubai Church, led powerfully by Princeton and Joy George, held a spiritual enrichment weekend where the theme was rightfully named The Spirit. Participating in this inspirational weekend included Middle East World Sector leaders Corey and G. Blackwell, the Middle East shepherding couple Michael and Sharon Kirshner, and Boston Church leaders Mike and Chanel Patterson to aid with the recent and upcoming changes in church leadership. After a time of teaching, strengthening, and encouragement in Dubai, the Blackwells and Kirshners flew to New York City to personally meet with the New York City Church and connect with the Northeast USA Church leaders. The Blackwells' time in New York City was in preparation for their move here in June, as Lord willing, at that time, the Spirit will blow Brandon and me to New Delhi, India, to oversee the South Asia churches. With these changes, the Northeast geographic sector will move from the Sages World Sector to be a part of the Middle East World Sector. This truly is the year of the Spirit. With Corey and G's coming, we are excited to see even greater things in our beloved New York City Church family. On March 27th, the Lima Peru Church witnessed the incredible baptisms of Julio and Amico, a couple who willingly broke up their relationship to pursue a true relationship with God. Amico joyfully shared that her careful search for God's kingdom was complete once she experienced the love of the sisters and saw that the scriptures were taught over traditions. Welcome to the family. Another testimony of the powerful work of the Spirit was moving up the date of the Taipei Mission Team send-off from November to May. Led valiantly by Aaron and Fang Ha, along with their newborn baby Jordan, the plans are for the team to leave Sydney on May 29th to host their inaugural service on July 24th. With these plans in place, Aaron and Fang have been accepted into the National Taiwan University for Mandarin Language course as a way to gain entry into the country. In total, the Taipei team is six disciples strong, and they are currently looking for six more Mandarin speakers. Perhaps the Spirit is calling you to be on this unforgettable mission team. Over in French Africa, the Abidjan Church, led dynamically by Blaise and Patricia Fumba, has witnessed over 30 baptisms in March. Of special note is Joshua, a medical student who was beaten and locked in his home by his parents as they tried to cut him off from the church. He valiantly responded by making invitation cards for a Bible discussion held at his medical college. God bless Joshua's faith and hard work with 25 guests, including the college dean at his first Bible talk as a disciple. And now, seven of these guests are currently studying the Bible and already Frank, an electrotechnic student, was baptized into Christ. Joshua, way to be a light on your campus. 
You might recall during GNN season one, episode four, we shared about how Chris Klopek, the Orlando church evangelist, lost most of his physical mobility, becoming a paraplegic due to complications after neck surgery. Well, he is now doing much better using his transformation to preach the word even more powerfully. One of those impacted by his preaching and recovering was his brother, Ben Klopek. After studying the Bible for the first time in 1995, Ben walked away from the truth. Eventually, he would be arrested and charged to serve a 10-year sentence in prison. Just recently, Ben was released and reached out to Chris again for spiritual help. Chris connected Ben to Chris's longtime friend, Salvador Velasco, and the brothers in LA's central region to study the Bible. After weeks of wrestling, Ben was baptized into Christ on March 22nd with a deep gratitude for his brother Chris never giving up on him. We are so grateful for Chris not only sharing the gospel, but his life as well, truly expressing God's love. We'd like to close out today's episode by honoring our movement leader and GNN executive producer, Dr. Kip McKean, as he celebrates 50 years in the Lord. Dr. Michael Kirshner, the International Christian Church Administrator, will share a few highlights from Kip's inspirational journey. Even though you have 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. On April 11, 1972, at 17 years old, as a freshman at the University of Florida, our beloved leader and dear father of God's modern day movement, Dr. Thomas Wayne McKean II, known by his nickname of Kip, was baptized into Christ. Therefore, on April 11th, 2022, we will celebrate his 50th spiritual birthday. We want to take a few moments to share with you some of the highlights of Kip's incredible service and leadership over the years. The Bible study series, First Principles, originally written and published by Kip in 1980 for the International Churches of Christ, was pivotal in propelling the gospel into 171 nations from 1979 to 2001. In fact, during those years, Kip personally planted the Manila, Bangkok, and Moscow ICOC churches, while leading the LA ICOC to become over 10,000 disciples. After many trials, yet led by the Spirit, the sold-out movement family of churches officially began in 2007, when Kip and his amazing wife Elena led 42 on a mission team from Portland, Oregon to plant the City of Angels International Christian Church in Los Angeles. During the early days, Kip unified our movement through preaching the five core convictions, thus restoring first century biblical Christianity. In 2009, God placed upon Kip's heart the Crown of Thorns project to evangelize the world. That same year, he founded Mercy Worldwide, the benevolent arm of the International Christian Churches the McKean Mercy Scholarship Foundation in honor of Kip's father and mother, Admiral Thomas and Kim McKean was established in 2020. Kip has a close and daily relationship with his mom and she enjoys watching every GNN episode. The International College of Christian Ministries was established in 2012. Kip received his doctorate degree in ministry at our first ICCM commencement in 2013. At that time, Kip's dad shared with me the one trait he admired most about his son, fortitude. Fortitude means courage, endurance, and resilience while in pain and enduring adversity. The ICCM gave birth to Kip's creating the Sold Out Press International Publishing House, which published his first book in 2016, Elevate, Jesus' Global Revolution for Women by Dr. Elena Garcia McKean. Then in 2020, after 13 years of writing the Good News emails, Kip initiated the Good News Network, GNN. So in all of these historic endeavors for 45 years, Kip's wife, Elena, has served by his side since their marriage on December 11, 1976. Olivia, Sean, and Eric, Kip and Elena's three children, and their families have given them five wonderful grandchildren. Today, Kip's vision and efforts for the evangelization of the nations in a generation have allowed our movement to reach 52 nations through 128 churches composed of 10,000 disciples on all six populated continents of the world. In 50 years, Kip has truly become the father of God's modern day movement and has hundreds and thousands of sons and daughters, grandsons and granddaughters in the faith. 
Thank you, Kip, for being a true father and grandfather in the faith to all of us. Happy 50th spiritual birthday. Happy 50th spiritual birthday, Kip. Now, family, thanks so much for joining us. If you enjoyed today's episode of GNN, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel below. Also, share with friends and family so they too can see God's Spirit working in unprecedented ways throughout the world. This is Luke and Brandon Speckman reporting to you from the Good News Network. The best news you'll ever see. To our dear brother Kip. Mi amor favorito Kip. Happy. Happy. Happy 50th. 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 Spiritual. Spiritual birthday. Spiritual birthday. Spiritual birthday. Spiritual birthday. We love you. We love you from London. I love the way you lead our family, our children, our grandchildren. Thank you for leading our spiritual children and grandchildren all around the world. I'm just blown away how God has used you. I'm so grateful I get to be a part of it. And may God continue to use you powerfully. I love you with all my heart.